We started week 36 by leaving our flat and walking across the street to Santa Maria Novella Church. Entering the nave, we faced Giada's altarpiece and then Moscato's Trinity. He was only 27 when he died, but he was the first painter to show real humans showing real emotions in a three-dimensional space. In 1374, Florence was hit by the Black Death that killed over half its population. The Oranga Chapel frescoes showed hundreds of figures and not a single smile. Here we have frescoes by Ghirlandaio showing wealthy Florentines rubbing shoulders with the saints and angels in classical and contemporary settings. These vibrant frescoes tell the story of Mary and John the Baptist. What you're seeing here might look three-dimensional, but they are all just a painted fresco on a two-dimensional surface, but it really can fool the eye. One of the highlights of Santa Maria Novella is the Spanish chapel, named by Cosimo I, who gave it to his Spanish bride, Eleanor. Artist Andre de Bonate's frescoes depict what's called the allegory of the triumphant and active church and the Dominican order. They were the ones who built and served this church. Even when you go outside and begin to walk around the courtyard, which is surrounding the green cloister, you see so many different frescoes on the walls, outside even. I counted over 30 of them. Got away from art that was created over 700 years ago and came across this international show of mosaic art. Very interesting and amazing shapes and textures. Wednesday, I went to the Museum of San Marco. This is one of my favorite places so far, and it was only four euros. It's a combination of Renaissance humanism and medieval spirituality. When San Marco was built, the Dominicans that lived in Fejazole, which is outside of Florence, were invited to move in. Thus, we have Fra Angelico and his outstanding and famous frescoes. On the first floor, are the monk's cells or bedrooms. After a long day of prayer, meditation, reading, frugal meals or chopping wood, hauling water, translating Greek or attending mass, and then some more prayers, a monk retired to one of these small, bare, lamp-lit rooms. What he had on the wall was his late-night TV. Here they could meditate before going to sleep. In a monastic life, everything was a form of prayer. These are the images I got from the rooms. Enjoy them.
might have mentioned our new church family here in Florence. It's International Christian Fellowship, and on Thursday nights we have a prayer and praise time. This is Dennis leading the worship. That night we had nine people from seven different countries. England, the Netherlands, Australia, Nigeria, the Philippines, and France. 